So, let's dive in. Here are our kittens again. By the way, that's uh, Lias, the boy kitten on the right. We don't have a name for the girl yet. Anyway, um, here's what a picture element looks like. You'll notice that this picture element contains two source elements. You might have seen those used for video or audio elements. Source elements do what you'd expect. They provide optional file sources. If the browser can use the first source, it will. Otherwise, it keeps looking down the list. The picture element is a great way to provide alternative sources for image files. So the browser can choose depending on device capabilities. We've used the source element here to specify WebP for browsers that support the WebP format with a JPEG fallback. This is a great way to make use of the high performance WebP format on platforms that support it while providing an alternative for platforms that don't. You can find out more about WebP from the article linked to below the video. By the way, that WebP file is massive. Looks like I should have saved it with lossy compression. Talking about fallbacks, again, what about browsers that don't support the picture element? Well, that's easy. We just include a plain old image element. In fact, the image element is non-optional because that's the element that actually displays the image. The picture element scaffolding, so to speak, simply tells the image what source to choose. In fact, we can rewrite the example like this. Because the browser defaults to the image element if it can't use any of the sources, earlier on you learned about art direction. One of the core problems you have when serving images to a variety of screen sizes and display sizes is that although some images scale quite nicely from large to small, other images don't work so well. They may have too much detail to work well on a small screen or be too wide to work on a viewport with a portrait orientation. 